Hello everyone and welcome to True Story. Our protagonist, let's call her A, began working in the family business after graduating from the London Institute of Commerce. This company, owned by her father, specializes in manufacturing clothing and handbags. A dedicated five years of her life to working in London before being transferred to the headquarters in Russia. Her father sent her to personally manage this branch because he had heard it was on the brink of bankruptcy and didn't want that to happen. Being too old to travel to Moscow himself, he thought his daughter would have a better life there. Little did A know the adventures and challenges that awaited her. But before diving into her story, let me remind you that after watching this video, you can explore our channel to discover many other incredible, interesting, and moving stories. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new here. Upon arrival in Moscow, A settled into her father's apartment and immediately dove into work. After observing the business for some time, she realized it wasn't as close to bankruptcy as she had been led to believe. Convinced that certain employees were to blame for the revenue decline, she decided to investigate. She quickly discovered that some employees spent more time chatting than working efficiently, causing production delays. To understand the situation from the inside, A accepted a position as a worker tasked with drying raw materials, allowing her to discreetly observe employee behavior. She noticed that Nikita, a frequently tardy young man, was particularly unproductive. She concluded that the lack of supervision and discipline contributed to the company's profit decline. Her plan was clear. Uncover the root causes of the problem without the employees knowing she was the new manager. Over time, she befriended Vasily, the accountant, who shared her frustrations about the irresponsible behavior of the employees. Vasily revealed to her that Nikita, the absentee superior, was primarily responsible for the situation. He managed the company negligently, squandering profits on entertainment and gambling. Not only did he fail to effectively supervise the company, but he also engaged in inappropriate relationships with some employees. This deeply concerned Vasily, who longed for the days when the company owner was present to ensure proper and profitable operation of the business. It was evident to Vikit that Vasily appreciated her, and she took advantage of it to question him about all the employees who, in her opinion, seemed unmotivated, as well as those who made efforts to work diligently. Vasily didn't hesitate to reveal all the details about the workers. In reality, he didn't like them much and wished for them to be reprimanded. Vic was deeply shocked by everything that was happening in the company. She asked the young man why the manager allowed all this. He replied that he didn't care and was only there for the money. The laxity of the employees allowed him to divert as much money as he wished. In Reims, he could attribute the lack of money to the company's declining revenues. Vicket was truly disgusted by the manager and the lazy employees. She knew she had to intervene and set things right if she didn't want her father's company to go bankrupt. Vikit asked Vasily to make a list of all the lazy workers as well as evidence to send to the manager. The plan was to present them as proof to the company owner. Vasily was surprised to hear this. He wondered why the new employee was so interested in the company. He concluded that, just like him, Vicket probably hated corruption and embezzlement. He saw similarities between them and liked her. So, he asked her out. Vicket replied that it wasn't the right time. She apologized, saying she was a new employee and needed to focus on her work for now. Vicket approached two workers who were talking and told them to get back to work. They laughed and asked who she thought she was, ironically calling her Je Madame Director, she and others laughed. It had been a month now, and there was still no change in the worker's attitude. Meanwhile, Nikita kept flirting with Vikit. He promised to give her money and a promotion if she agreed to sleep with him. One day, Nikita received an email from the company owner informing him that he was sending his daughter to take over the company. As soon as he heard this, 
he ordered the employees to pretend to work on the day the new owner was supposed to arrive. All the workers were in their places. Nikita was elegantly dressed and ready for the owner's arrival. A man entered and told Nikita that the owner had asked everyone to gather in the hall because she wanted to meet each employee. So, everyone headed to the hall and waited patiently for the owner. Vicket entered the hall, dressed in a beautiful suit and wearing sunglasses. She watched the employees behaving as if they were disciplined and took off her glasses. Everyone in the hall was shocked. Nikita approached her and told her he was waiting for the company owner. Vicket searched her bag and pulled out some documents which she read. When she finished, he was speechless. No one was more surprised than Vasily. He realized he had fallen in love with her but didn't want to tell her. Vicket revealed to him that her real name was Grosvenor and that she was the company owner. She took out a piece of paper from her bag and told the employees she didn't want to see the people whose names she mentioned in her company anymore. The first name she mentioned was Nikita's. She told him she would also file a complaint against him. She asked the remaining employees to work with the team she had brought from London to prevent the company from going bankrupt. She worked very hard. She signed new contracts with new partners and got heavily involved in the production and marketing of products. In three months, the company's finances were balanced. As she had said, Nikita was sued. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison and a huge fine. All his properties were seized and his bank accounts frozen. The money obtained from the trial was used to relaunch the company. Soon, the company made good profits. They were both very happy. Now, whenever they had free time, they spent it eating together and discussing the future. Vasily eventually confessed his love to Vicket and his desire to marry her. She was also in love with him, so they decided to be together. She then called her father to tell him the good news and invited him to come to the wedding. Her father, who had helped fight the company's fraud, was happy that things were going as planned. The couple got married in a beautiful ceremony in Moscow. They worked as a team, and the company quickly became one of the most famous clothing and handbag companies in the country. What is your opinion about this story? Let us know in the comments. If you liked this video, then click the E like E button and share it with others. See you soon on True Story.